Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about attachment theory. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you about attachment theory. So what happens when the right theory comes along at just the right time? A kind of perfect theory that can make all your doubts go away about some really huge issues in your life. Well, you might get something a lot like attachment theory. Let's talk about where attachment theory came from, what it is, and then we'll get into some of the current science. Attachment is a connection or bond with others. And when we talk about attachment theory, we can get even more specific. Attachment theory is about defining the type of bond a child has with their parent. The first to start narrowing in on this developmental psychology question of how children experience anxiety when they're separated from their parent or caregiver was British psychologist John Bowlby. Bowlby published a massively influential paper in 1958 that explored this question, but it was definitely something a lot of scientists and people were interested in at that time. That's the same year that Harry Harlow published his famous study where he separated infant monkeys from their mothers. This is a time when the world is still recovering from the effects of World War II. Topics like motherhood and how to raise children were being re-examined. According to Bowlby, the bond between a child and their caregiver was extremely important. So important that the bond that they develop impacts them for the rest of their life. Bowlby thought this evolutionarily just made sense. The closer bond we have with our caregiver, the closer we want to stay to them, the more likely we are able to survive and to thrive. According to this idea, attachment becomes a big predictor of our future success and happiness. In the 1970s, Bowlby student Mary Ainsworth devised an experiment called the Strange Situation Procedure. In the Strange Situation Procedure, a caregiver and their baby are in a room when a stranger comes in. The stranger starts talking to the parent, then the parent leaves, and the stranger tries to interact with the baby. The parent comes back and tries to also interact with the baby. After that, both the parent and the stranger leave the baby alone. Then, the stranger comes back in and tries to interact with the baby. <laughs> Last, the parent comes back in again and interacts with the baby while the stranger leaves. It's a lot of coming and going, all right? But the important part of this whole process is that you can watch it and identify some different interactions that are going on about how much the baby wants to interact with their parent and for how long, or if maybe they're avoidant or resistant to being with that parent. For this procedure, Ainsworth developed three types of caregiver child attachments. The first, she called secure attachment, and she considered it to be the healthiest. Securely attached children prefer their parent over a stranger, are upset when their parents leave them alone, and are happy to see them when they come back. The second type is avoidant attachment, where the baby is kind of unresponsive to their parent. They really don't care if their parent leaves and basically act the same way with their parent as they do with the stranger. The third type is called resistant attachment, and that's when the child is clingy to their parent, but also gets mad at them when they leave. It's very difficult to soothe that child even after their parent comes back. The fourth type of attachment was developed in the 90s, and it's called disorganized attachment. The main observable behavioral difference for these children behaviorally is that they will cry or show distress when their parent comes back into the room as if they're fearful of their parent. Attachment theory has been a leading theory in developmental psychology for a long time, and the strange situation procedure does have a track record of being able to pretty clearly demonstrate that there are observable behavioral differences in the way children react to their caregivers. That's why it's still taught in a lot of general psychology textbooks. 
But this wouldn't be Psy versus Psy if I didn't give you the whole scientific picture. First off, the idea of what is the best style of attachment varies widely from culture to culture. Ainsworth definitely had a very American style view of which attachment style she thought was healthiest. Attachment theory also overlooks some other really important factors that might have a strong impact on how children are interacting with their parents. For instance, the child's natural personality or temperament. A lot of the observable behaviors that they're looking for are highly specific things like crying. If you just aren't a big crier as a baby, you would seem really healthily, securely attached, according to Ainsworth. But the biggest factor here is that as children who have been identified in their childhood as securely attached grew up, they were not showing differing rates on things such as anxiety or depression. They didn't feel happier. They didn't consider themselves more successful. Remember, the whole idea of attachment theory is to use how attached you are to your parent as a predictor of adulthood happiness and success. Since the securely attached group doesn't show differences, then how is it a predictor of happiness or success? Attachment theory has certainly been hugely influential on developmental psychology, but the concept is faltering the more individuals start to see these different types of criticism. If you want to know more about developmental psychology, or if you want to know more about the science of psychology, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!